Welcome to this Goldilocks Productions presentation. Before we begin the show, let's go over quick guidelines. Callers, if you would like to get on air to ask the show host a question, please press 1. All those callers that do not press 1 and any blocked phone numbers, unlisted phone numbers, and Skype callers whose phone numbers do not show up on the switchboard, you will be in listen mode only. It is not mandatory that the show hosts bring on callers. So please keep your questions to one question only and be mindful and respectful of the other callers that are calling in and of the show host as well. If you have any issues or any problems um, and even any compliments or testimonials, please contact the Goldilocks Productions show producer and owner at the email of goldilocksproductions at hotmail.com. Again, that email is Goldilocks with a Y, goldilocksproductions at hotmail.com. Thank you. Now on with the show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the Goldilocks Productions presentation of the In the Psychic Flow Show with Carol Ann Carey. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in and listening to our show, In the Psychic Flow. I am your host, Carol Ann. I'm so delighted that you're joining us this evening. We have a really special show tonight with a really special guest. Um, I have a few details I do want to get out of the way Before we begin, Uh, next week we have Laura Romero, the Angel and Healing Light Show radio show host. Her website is angelsandhealinglight.com. You can call on your angels. You might need them this month for protection. I don't know if you're doing some paranormal exploration. I'm not sure since it is the month of Samhain and Halloween. So you might want to call in then if you need readings. Uh, the week after that is October 24th. We have Kelly Jo, psychic. She's a paranormal investigator, uh, medium psychic. She's been a psychic since childhood. Uh, she is going to teach us how to clean your home of ghosties and what tools you need and what to do and talk about that. So if you have questions that week, uh, October 24th, please feel free to call in the show and speak with Kelly Jo. She is amazing. And also... Special, Halloween special, October 31st, we have Christy Sumner. She is from the Soul Sisters Paranormal Group, sisters and friends that travel across the U.S. investigating and uh, either debunking or supporting paranormal instances in homes, businesses, and in uh, public places. So they are all over the U.S., Their uh, website is soulsistersparanormal.com. KellyJoePsychic.com is Kelly Joe's. And Laura Romero is angelsandhealinglight.com. So please look those individuals up. My website is carolanncarey.com. It is C A R O L A N C A R E Y.com. I hope that you will consider me your spirit connection. I do private readings in Sarasota, international readings via phone. Uh, Spirit knows no bounds, so don't worry. You can call me, and even if you're in Iowa, it's fine. I will make sure that we connect with your departed loved ones. So enough of all of our announcements. I am delighted and honored to have a wonderful guest with us this evening, Adita Felt, who is F-E-L-T. Let me spell her whole name for you, E D D. I-T-A, last name F-E-L-T dot com, has an amazing website. Uh, Adita has been do- in this business for a long, long time. She has a wonderful video of in- uh, introduction of herself and all of her services. She is a paranormal investigator, psychic medium. She does pet readings, sweetheart readings. She teaches. Uh, she does uh, grew, d- talks about grief. She did, works with you with children who have psychic abilities. 
We're going to talk with her tonight about a couple of the things that she does. She is also an author. She is working on two books. Fabulous. She's going to talk about that. And she's also going to talk about uh, rescuing souls. And so we are delighted to have Adita with us this evening. Uh, if you have some paranormal questions that would you, you would like to ask Adita, please save them for the end of the interview. We will see if we have time to bring you on. Okay. Adita, are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, Good evening. I'm so glad. Good evening. How are you doing today? Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Great. I am delighted to have you on the show. I think I had you on this show way in the beginning, or maybe it was my other show on Society by Radio. Um, you are a fascinating individual. Your um, introduction says that you started seeing spirits at two and a half years old. Yes. Wow. And how does that feel to be like that all of your life? Well, at first, you don't know that it's different. That's true. (laughs) And and then at some point you realize that it is different. mm -hmm. And then it feels really weird. Yeah. I would imagine. Did did people tell you not to... um, I'm sorry, go ahead. I said I started hearing them before I started seeing them. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Because I know that you are, are, I know you're clairaudient, clairvoyant as well. Uh, What did people tell you not to talk about this, or were you encouraged in this work? Well, um when I was a child, uh, my um, brothers and sisters um, thought I was crazy, and they they told all our all their friends that I was crazy uh, because I was the only person that was hearing um, the scary things that were happening in the house and um, and, and or seeing anything. And so uh, they thought that I was crazy, and that's what they told all of their friends, and who told a lot of other people so. Um, that made uh, my life interesting for a while. Yeah, I would imagine so I that didn't is... talk about it after that. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, I bet they're sorry now, right, that they did, they made fun of you or whatever or shunned you because you're very well known. You live in Maine, correct? You're in the, the cold state of Maine. <laughs> yes, I'm in the, in the beautiful cold state of Maine. <laughs> okay. And you do a lot of investigating up there. You have um, some haunted tours, and you uh, your group is called Frontiers of the Mind. Is that your paranormal investigating group? Uh, the group is called A-Team at Frontiers of the Mind, um, and okay. our Facebook page is Frontiers of the Mind. So um, okay. people who have questions can go to that um, Facebook page, and we will help you with questions. Uh, we also help people with uh, clearing their houses from that page as well. Wow. And you are also writing about your experiences now. You said, yes. I think you mentioned you have two books you're working on. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I have two books I'm, I'm working on. One is called A Ghost in the House, and it's about it's for people who have grown up with these things happening in the house and thought there was something wrong with them their whole lives long. And and it's about real-life people um, who are like them that have had these experiences um, since being um, small. And it's just really the idea is to let people know that there's nothing wrong with them. They're really okay. It's really normal for some people to have these kinds of experiences. And the second book is called Real Name Goes Real Name People, which um, I talk um I go through some of the different um, locations that I've been at in, in different main towns, um, and I usually have two or three <laughs> in most of the towns that I've worked in because people, you know, word of mouth. And um, I, uh, we have pictures of the site and, and some of the people that um, allowed us to come into their homes and clear their homes for them. Uh, and uh, so I'm working on those two books, and I'm spending a lot of time working on helping spirits um, to cross over uh, earthbound spirits from those sites, but also from other sites like nursing homes, uh, VA hospitals that are haunted, um, uh, places where 
um, atrocities have occurred, uh, the idea is to shift the energy in those places, release those spirits, and heal the earth underneath it so that um, the energy on the planet changes, lifts, becomes closer to the light. And that's why we do what we do. That's amazing. I had wanted to speak to you about that. That was one of the things I wanted to question you about. I found so fascinating. I don't know any other um, paranormal groups or psychic mediums that is doing that. In particular, you had mentioned uh, Nazi concentration camps. I don't know of anyone uh, that else that's doing this work. Is that the kind of work that you're talking about? Yes. Um, we are. We started out small, well, relatively small. We started out working with um, ordinary houses, and and then my guides told me that um, there were um, there were bigger um, areas of concern that with healing um, could um, shift the energy of the planet uh, and help us uh, help the planet to be more peaceful and avoid nuclear annihilation. <laughs> and we like the sound of that, so. Um, we that we have done at the VA hospital, and a lot of these we do remotely. Um, we have several piece, uh, people on the team. We have um, everyone has shamanic training. Everyone has mediumship training. Um, we know how to work with energy. Um, everyone has dowsing training. Um, and when we're going into a place, we need those things. And when, when we're doing remote healing, so remote clearing. Um, we're mostly working with the energy. We're not physically there, but we may still do, use our dowsing skills, and of course we use our our, our healing skills. Um, uh, 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 all of them while we're talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, um, it frequently does. We can't love to be involved in investigations as well. Uh, we're losing your volume a little bit. Um, the cat is sitting on my Bluetooth <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. Um, when you're working, let's say you're working on uh, concentration camps in Europe, mm-hmm. I presume, in like Germany yes, or Belgium or wherever. Yeah. Do you have, uh, do you contact any other people? Do you have any contacts with uh, psychics over there that do that kind of work? I have contacted a few mediums over there, and and the um, the response that I've got has not been very enthusiastic. Uh, that's because most of the governments in these countries do not want people going into the concentration camps for quote religious reasons, and they see um, crossing over as a uh, as a religious um, type, of, I suppose, some sort of religious ceremony or whatever. So. Um, all the people that I've talked to um, have been in Germany, and they have been very, uh, I wouldn't say standoffish about it, but they've made it clear that they don't want to personally go into the concentration camps because there is an issue with the government about that. Um, uh-huh. And if you are an individual and you go in there and you start to do a ceremony, there's a there's an issue with that as well. So that's why we do the majority of what we do uh, remotely. But we would like to have contact uh, with other um, mediums, traumatic practitioners, um, psychics um, within those countries to help us um, with some of the aspects of this. We mostly work with pictures right now, mostly remotely with pictures. Oh, that's terrific. So if yep. we do have some outreach into uh, uh, in Europe, some people from Europe do listen to us, so if they're mm-hmm. listening tonight, please get in touch with Adita Felt, uh, dot com so that she can talk to you about that. You can reach out to her uh, if you would like to do this kind of work. And if anybody listening, any of our listeners are interested in more, they can contact you through the website, correct, and, and correct. talk about that. Because it That's is – um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um. Ordinary people can, can help with this, too. If ordinary people are sending prayers um, to um, uh, Nazi concentration um, sites, campsites, or sending prayers to uh, places where there were slave labor camps or um, uh, uh, in the south of slave plantations or 
and other places would be jails and um, the uh, schools that the Native American children were sent to and forced to be separated from their families. If you send prayers and send light, you anybody can help with that piece of it. The crossing over part, people probably need a little training because when we're doing this work, not only are we dealing with the, um, the victims, but sometimes some of the, um, I don't want to call them the bad guys, but some of the people who were, for instance, slave um, uh, owners or slave overseers or um, concentration camp guards are, are also stuck in those emotional traps in those areas. And unless you have some experience working with those kinds of spirits, you probably would not want to um, go all the way into this uh, process of, of helping these folks um, cross over at these kinds of sites, which can send prayers and you can um, send white light and you can um, uh, send kind thoughts and you can have pictures on the wall and focus on bringing healing to this place or that place. And if you are, um, uh, I have any interest in earth-based spirituality, you can send um, love to the land underneath uh, where this has happened. Here in Maine, we did um, a site in Norridgewock, Maine. It was a Father Rail uh, um, site. It was a village where the British came in during prior uh, to the Revolutionary War. The British came in um, and they um, killed the chief of the village and they killed um, Father Rail, who was their spiritual teacher, and killed uh, a lot of the natives and the rest of them ran um, away to Canada. And there was uh, there was a lot of energy on that site that the site, the earth itself, needed to be cleared. It needed to be healed and it needed to be loved. And so we went and did, and that particular site, we went and did ceremony uh, there for clearing the land. And, and that was a pretty awesome experience, let me tell you. <laughs> when you talk about ceremony, you're talking about the shamanic uh, work, a shamanic ceremony to release from the earth, is that correct, or yes. am I wrong? Oh, okay, yes. good. Uh-huh. Yeah, we took in, Very interesting. We took in a, a sage. Um, we walked all around the property, um, and we used uh, the, prop- the properties of, of white light and healing light, like a like a beam going through from one side of the property to the other side of the property. We sent healing energies down into the earth. Uh, we sang healing songs to the earth as we were doing this. We did drumming and um, chanting, um, and we actually asked um, the spirits of that um, place to help us, um, the protective spirits of that place to, to help us with this process of healing. We've also uh, done um, a VA hospital and a nursing home as well. In fact, there's been um, in both of those settings there were uh, huge amounts of earthbound spirits. The VA hospital we did remotely, and the nursing home we did in the room of one of the um, patients uh, in one of the nursing homes uh, who had asked us for help um, with uh, clearing. And so we did a ceremony in her room, a shamanic healing ceremony in her room, and there were all kinds of people that were stuck in that nursing home. The place feels a lot better now, a lot lighter. Yeah, you know, you really don't think about that, but... Um, I guess uh, people are confused, perhaps. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, or yeah. stuck because they're afraid to go for- further, or um, just it's just such a traumatic event that oh, maybe yeah. took them that um, they just don't know what to do, you know. And that's yeah. a, a beautiful point. Thank you for doing that work because it's incredibly important. You know, we don't think about that often enough, the damage done to our earth and um, the poor souls that may be trapped there that maybe don't want to be there. They want to, they want to be with their, reunited with their families, you know, right. on the other side. Um, Some of them don't it, even have a sense of that anymore. They just know that they're, they feel like that they're trapped, they can't go anywhere, and they're afraid and... Uh, and it's it's an emotional trap. It's actually like an emotional matrix that they're um, stuck like a fly um, on fly paper or in a spider web. And our job is to kind of gently 
removed that fly from the spider web and assist that that fly to um, to take off again. And of course, we work with angels um, and uh, spirit guides and furry animals. And um, several people on the team are um, are Wiccan, um, shamanic. Uh, we have I think, uh, several an- really strong angel healers on our team. So we're kind of interdenominational. Oh, that's beautiful. That is really beautiful. And so that all of their, uh, your collective skills are utilized in in many ways, I would imagine, right, for yeah. healing. Uh, that is awesome. That is really terrific. It's uh, so nice to know that because a lot of people will watch, you know, like taps or something on <coughs> TV, excuse me, and they're not familiar with groups like yours that incorporate so many different abilities and so many different people. Um, how do you work with, I noticed, um, thank you for sharing all that about that. That's very uh, informative. What do you um, teach people or how do you teach people to connect with pets? I noticed you do workshops on developing people's, uh, I would imagine, their skills, their clairaudience and clairvoyance and psychic yeah. abilities. What about ch- um what about animals? What kind of workshops do you do on animals? Mm-hmm. Um, I do I do um, healing work with animals. Um, I do uh, actually I do a lot of remote um, healing work with animals. I get calls from just a few people um, that in the Massachusetts area that have sort of talk you know word of mouth kind of thing. And there's some folks here in Maine. So I do a lot of remote healing with animals and remote communication. With animals, it's interesting. They don't get stuck um, when they pass the way uh, humans do. That's interesting. Why would that be? I think it's because when humans are stuck, there's a it's an emotional impetus that you, it's ah. the lock that you uh, that you have to turn the key in to um, to let to let them out. Um, I don't think that animals have the same kind of uh, uh, destructive or so I don't think it's destructive so much as it is humans can become very um, intently focused so focused on an emotion or a feeling that uh, they get stuck in that feeling so I don't see um, the animals that I come in contact with doing that they, visit their, they come and visit their loved ones after they pass to the other side um, and the love, their loved ones will see them and sense them. But there's not that emotional stuck uh, place the way that humans uh, seem to do. Hmm. I guess that would make sense because they don't have that ego uh, involved or whatever it is that stops us. Um, a lot of different uh, – I've read a lot about the other side. What is your experience? Are animals in a different spot on the other side, or are they with? Because when I do uh, readings with the departed loved ones, often a departed pet will come through. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if they are like together. Sometimes I will see the departed one with an animal, usually, but sometimes I just get the animal. Are they in the same place? What's your What's your feeling about that? My sense about that is that they're that they're on the same level. They spend time together when they want to spend time together, and mm-hmm. and they're, but the the animal is no longer dependent upon the human. Right. No longer okay. emotionally or physically dependent. So the animal comes and spends time with the human, um, and the human um, goes and spends time with the um, animal. But there's uh, not a, a constant. No one is taking care. of of anyone else's needs anymore. It's much more cooperative. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you for answering that. Because that came up a couple of times, and uh, the way I had it had explained to it, I had a, I think it was a cat or a dog explained to me, there is God West and God East. It's the way they were telling me about it. And we're on this side, and we go visit them, and they're on that side, and they come visit us. So that's pretty much yeah. what the, uh, I think, believe it was a dog I was speaking to when I said, well, hey. where are you, you know? So I think that's what the dog was trying to explain. So well done, Adita. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. 
I recently um, was going to do some readings um, uh, at a, one of the spiritualist churches, and in the car on my way there, I suddenly noticed in the passenger seat a beagle sitting beside a hound dog and ah. a, a spirit um, of a beagle and a hound dog, and they were best friends. And it was so interesting to me because they wanted to come along because somebody who was there um, was their um, their uh, human companion. And oh. it was very interesting to me that the human immediately, when I asked, um, I asked, I wasn't serving the church, so I asked later, um, and I was drawn to this man, and I asked him, um, by any chance, would you recognize a, um, a beagle and a hound together hanging out and riding in the car and being very excited about it? And, and it, it was the gentleman that I was drawn to, and they, and he had been thinking about one of them, one of the beagles, um, just a few days before that, and wondering how things were going for the beagle on the other side. So they had come in together, which I thought was very sweet. Oh, that's very nice. That's very comforting, I would imagine, for that gentleman. It would be yeah. for me. That would be very comforting. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It um, people uh, want to talk to their deceased loved ones, and they're usually pretty good, like if, if I'm in person doing a reading. But you bring in that dog or that cat that passed, but they're, they're bawling like a baby. You know, <laughs> we are so connected to our animals. It's really I something. Sure are. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's quite amazing. So that's an, another aspect of things that you do. Um, you do do a lot of teaching I and do, healing. Yeah. And um, I, I think that's really great. Again, Adita's uh, website is aditafelt.com, E D D. I T A F E L T dot com. You have some very interesting videos. I was watching an investigation that you filmed. Um, I believe it was a was it a place? It was a there was like a um, a place where they had a loom or they made uh, uh, what would you call fiber or rugs or something? Was there something? Oh, that was the that was the mill in uh, in the mill. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's an awesome place. I mean, there's so much going on there, and we've been, we actually have to go in there um, every, uh, just about every year and a half, because it's that main costume, uh, main music theater costume design has their offices in this um, very old, you know, that's been repurposed as an office complex. Um, and uh, the, the thing about theaters uh, is that People that are wearing these costumes put such intense energy into them. It's high energy. And so they practice the costumes to practically walk by themselves by the time somebody gives it for 12 or 14 shows, right? So yeah. um, there's all this, this high energy, and, and spirit people are drawn to it. And they come in there, and uh, we have to go in regularly after they've done another a couple of seasons and clean out all of the energies that are in the costumes, um, and it's just amazing. That building is, is a, a, a really cool building. We did, um, we did a video of that, and what was most interesting about that building, well, there were lots of things, but they had these really scary elevators, and there was a spirit that wanted to talk to us, and this isn't in the video, but there was a spirit that wanted to talk to us, and we thought we were all done with this particular floor where the storage um, stuff was. We got in the elevator, myself and my friend, um, Lisa, who's one of the members of my team, and we tried to lock the elevator, and the elevator would not. Uh, we thought it was locked, and it wouldn't go anywhere. And we thought we were trapped in the elevator. And, oh, and no. Lisa said, Lisa said, okay, is there somebody here who wants to tell us something? Please tell us. Let's get this over And what actually happened is there were spirits that were connected with the elevator that wanted to be released. And when we talked to them uh, and um, released them, all of a sudden the elevator started fine and we were back downstairs. <laughs> and very yeah, see, that's why I, I'm kind of scared of that the paranormal work. I'm a big sissy when it comes to that. That's the kind of stuff that would freak me out. But I'm sure you're used to it. Uh, it's a specialty work. It definitely is. And I don't think it's for sissies, that's for sure. No, 
And I don't do no. it by myself either. I I do it with people on my team because everybody has um, specific um, skills and ways of, of doing things. And um, we have, for instance, some people on our team uh, that are um, very um, emotional. And if there's a, a, like a bad spirit um, around or a troublesome spirit is probably a best way, better way to put it, um, uh, uh, that person might be attacked emotionally. And somebody else on the team who's standing there and isn't uh, and has a different way of, of, of operating in the world sees that and knows how to help that person and comes over and does healing energy with the person who's dealing with this troublesome spirit and someone else on the team starts working with getting rid of this troublesome spirit. And so everybody has each other's back, and it, it really feels good to know that you're not doing this by yourself. You are making a difference in the world, but you're not doing it by yourself. It's, it's teamwork. Right. That is, that's very important, I would think, to tell our listeners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because if you haven't done this kind of work before, I, I don't think people should do this kind of work with unless they have really good um, boundaries around relationships because you have to have good boundaries with the spirits. Otherwise, you'll bring something home with you that you don't want to bring home with you. Um, right. You have, to, you have to know how to work with energy. Uh, you have to be a good team player. Uh, you have to, uh, in, my, in my opinion, um, you have to be uh, a person that's paying good, close attention to nuance um, and, and or uh, what other people on the team, if someone on the team starts acting strangely or starts reacting in a, in a way that's very different, um, we need to be paying attention to that and follow through on that and find out what's causing that because um, sometimes um, spirits can um, impress themselves very strongly over uh, a team member, and um, that team member uh, may not be immediately aware of it, but we're all paying right. attention to each other and the energy, and uh, so we know how to, how to do that, um, and we, I think we do it pretty well. Well, that's we amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. That's amazing. I know you're very well sought after that people know to get you, uh, apparently, for these really problems. You know, this is this can be a problem. Yeah. Uh, for like you said, it's an office space above a theater or something that has uh, entities still there and attracting. Mm-hmm. Is it possible that um, when you were called back to the place like the mill and or a theater or something? Is there a portal there that's open that these spirits just walk in and out, or um, there was a portal what? at the mill? Yes, there was a okay. portal at the mill. And there was one uh, we did uh, in Chopton. We did uh, Roller World in Chopton, and there's, there's a video um, about that on YouTube as well. Um, and that one, uh, the Lewiston Sun Journal came in while we were uh, working on that site and did some. Um, Recording of what we were doing on the site, working with the, the spirits that were there, and there, so there was a portal there as well. Um, so portals are something that you need to be aware of when you're going into a place. If you if you find yourself having a, a lot of spirits who don't seem to have any relationship to each other, and it's not a chronological layering thing, then you're going to say, "All right, well, there's a bunch of disparate spirits here. Why?" Are they here? Do we have a portal? And then you're going to look oh, at okay. the portal. Mm-hmm. And, and you're going to close um, the portal. Oh, so you want to close it, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And we often will move a, a, a portal um, if it's a if it's an issue. If it's going through someone's house, it's an issue. <laughs> yeah. And some people inadvertently open these portals. Correct. Yes. And tap yeah. into this, and then they have this these problems. Yeah. And they don't. Then and they don't know what to do. Exactly. Um, Ouija boards are a prime um, uh, cause of that. Um, that uh, people will play with Ouija boards a lot, and it's like leaving the back door to the universe open. And every time Dick and Harry in the universe can waltz in, you know. And so um, it makes a. It can make a, a portal. Create a portal. I've done. Um, we've done uh, several um, houses here in Maine where. 
um, Ouija boards would move by themselves um, as fellow stuff by themselves because they had been used so much and there were uh, uh, portals and things were coming through and causing issues. For in one case, it was an elderly um, couple. He was in his 90s, um, and she was, I think, 89, and they had all kinds of stuff going on in their house. Um, and in the other case, it was a young family um, that had two young girls, um, and the little girls were being dunked out of bed at night and being scared and growling noises and stuff like that. In both cases, a portal had been opened due to um, a, a use of the tarot, excuse me, use of a Ouija board um, without the right kinds of intention and the right state of mind. If you use a Ouija board as a, as a toy, as a fun thing, um, then uh, really that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't think people understand because it's often, a Ouija board is often sold as a game. Yeah. And uh, I used one, let me see, um, someone had gave me one, and I used one, and I'll, I'll tell you, it kept me up like 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning with these crazy spirits. And until I recognized, I trained in mediumship and recognized I have a doorkeeper that I work with, I wouldn't yeah. have that problem now. But when you don't right. have a, a, a protection like a doorkeeper or mm-hmm. whatever, a gatekeeper or whatever you want to call them, if you don't have exactly. a good relationship with protection and use protection every day, you can get whacked, let me tell you, because yeah. it, it would- does happen. I was so grateful to learn about uh, that we all can ask for a date keeper and a guardian angel and, um, uh, 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 and spirit guides and healing guides. We all have access to this network of helpers um, if we ask for it and put the energy into it. And, um, and when I found that out, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so much easier because it used to be that the spirits would just waltz into my house and, you know, that would be – I'd be like, what's going on here? <laughs> wow, that's got to be kind of got, scary. Yes, it really was. It really was. Um, I, I had uh, experience with the poltergeist when I was just a teenager. I had no yes, idea I was just going to ask going you on. that. I was just going to ask about that. You were, what, 13? Um, actually, I, I was uh, 16 years old. Okay. And what did you do with this poltergeist? Well, I didn't know what to do. As, as culture guys, after a while, generally, they will go away after they make your life miserable for a while. And they did make my life pretty miserable. I was pretty scared there for um, probably about a year or a year and a half. Um, and after that, I was really nervous because I was afraid something else might happen. Um, and it made me very, a very anxious person um, until I got my own... Um, uh, gatekeeper or, or doorkeeper, um, I was sort of at the mercy of, of any Tom, Dick, and Harry in the universe, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's, sure. this is what happens at people who don't really receive the proper education and training, I say. That's what I, I blame say, it on. You're absolutely correct. Oh, yes, that is, that, yeah. that is so important. And that's why yeah, a lot of people feel um Right. A lot of people are gifted naturally like yourself, and they have these experiences, and they're like, well, I see in here and blah, blah, blah. But um, my answer to that is you still have to harness that in an ethical and spiritual way that you can use those gifts without blowing yourself up. Yeah. Absolutely. And and ego is such an issue, uh, I found. I've met people who are really excellent mediums, but ego um, causes them to, um, like any other, in any other profession, um, ego can cause some people to think that um, they know all, see all, you know, and, and no one else um, knows anything, and, and uh, they're the boss and you have to do it their way. My experience with my with my students is that everybody learns in a slightly different way. A good teacher um, uh, is going to be looking uh, out for how does a student learn? How can I best help this student? If the student loves music a lot, I'm going to um, I'm going to ask about is this is this student a good person to try 
um, clear audience with, teaching this student how to do clear audience um, and how to use music for healing and so on and so forth. If this person is really interested in um, uh, tennis or running or something like this, I'm thinking this person is a kinesthetic person, they're kinesthetically motivated, so they're going to feel spirit in their body or um, are, are close into their bodies, that that's where things are going to start happening for them. They're going to feel feelings and, uh, and know things about people and feel it because they're primarily kinesthetic. And I've got people, some, uh, some teachers or mediums who think that um, there's only one way to teach mediumship and they don't look at what the individual student is and what the individual student it's like in a, in a regular classroom. It's no different. You you want to teach to your students' strengths, and, and you want to put your own ego over to the side and and don't worry about what you think that person um, should, you know, should learn, learn and how they should learn. But pay attention to what your guides are telling you about this person and, and gently guide them in a way that's going to be helpful to them. It's going to help uncover their own um, gifts. That's excellent point. I have never heard anyone say that. So thank you because I've taught and uh, Jen, I try to make it uh, user friendly and mm-hmm. but still getting you know the the concepts of what you need to bring forth. You know, um, mm-hmm. I use a certain method, but not everyone is going to see, hear, or taste. Not everyone has those gifts yet. When they develop one, the other ones will come. But they may have right. to work on those, you know, and everybody is That's an right. individual. So um, thank you for that. That's tremendous. Uh, Adita Felt has some great classes listed on her uh, website, so please check that out. And she sounds like an excellent teacher to take into consideration how you learn, which, you know, that's that's the important thing, right? So thank mm-hmm. you for mentioning that. And you're right about the ego because if you're not um, – willing to learn or willing to learn how someone else works, you know, you're not learning anything, and that's what life's about, really. If you're all yeah. ego, you're not learning anything. So uh, that's right. that is well, – let me ask you one more thing about this, uh, about the paranormal here. You also mention uh, elementals, which I don't often hear people talk about. Now, they mm-hmm. – could you explain what they are? Um, yes. In, in what I've learned about the paranormal, um, there are elements of um, all that is that some people have uh, come into contact with in other philosophies, such as certain magical philosophies. Um, oh, like Wicca in, or Earth religion? Yes, or, um, for instance, the Kabbalah. Um, uh-huh. Uh, so... So um, elementals are um, being, I call them beings, for lack of a better word, um, who are, uh, they don't have feelings like you and me, and they live in the landscape. They're, I, I've mm-hmm. kind of met water elementals, I've met earth elementals, um, I've met air elementals, um, and, and they're, they're, they don't think like we think. They're um, the only the only way I can think of to say it is that it's like um, archetypal. It's like an archetypal kind of energy that's very directed towards um, water. And I, I know of, of Wiccans who have told me, uh, and I've seen fairies. I've seen fairies uh-huh. before. And I yeah. know Wiccans who have told me that uh, they've seen giants before. Um, and so if they see this and it is real to them, um, I'm not going to argue about whether or not it's real. Uh, so many people have written about this stuff. So many people have experienced it. Who am I to say that how I experienced the world or how I, what I grew up be- believing as a religion or a philosophy that I have any kind of handle on the truth that, with a capital T? Right. <laughs> um, I, I was doing a, a reading, a sample reading for a teacher. Uh, Mm -hmm. one year, and I was looking at their property for some reason. In my mind was their property. 
and I saw this beautiful bush, and I, I saw these lights around it, and they comment, oh, mm-hmm. this is a, it's like a red flower or something. And they said, oh, yes, it's, we don't do anything to it. It just grows and grows. And I said, well, I think it's because of the these little lights. I think they're uh, elementals. That's right. And I don't know what else they could be. So they were elementals, you think? Yes. I think okay. they and, quite like, or they could have been fairies, um, yeah. not having okay. been there. Okay. And, and that's a, a slightly different kind of energy. Um, very often when you meet an elemental, uh, um, uh, if, you are, if you're doing a house that um, is having issues with water or seepage um, in the cellar, and you can, uh, you can feel it, you can sense it when you go in, you can smell it because um, you're psychic, right? Um, very often there is an issue because water has been diverted without anyone asking permission to divert it and it, it wasn't blessed it wasn't done in a sacred way um and the water is diverted and the water is not happy about it there is a water elemental sometimes hanging out in that cellar trying to get the water back into the cellar back into the way that the water was flowing before because the elemental doesn't know um anything different except that the water needs to flow so what we do in a case like that is we um, find a place for the elemental in water, if it's a water elemental. If it's an earth elemental, we'll move it to a different place from the inside of people's house or underneath in their, school, in their um, crawl space. I remember finding earth elementals on, on, under, in a crawl space underneath a house uh, down in Cape Netic. And that was interesting. Um, <laughs> wow, well, that is uh, fascinating. So not only do you go into a place... And you have uh, ghosts or spirits that are ch- uh, that are trapped. I guess ghosts are different than spirits that are trapped. You have elementals that could be causing trouble. So you really have yeah. the gamut. You could have a poltergeist. You've got a whole gamut of things that that's are possibly true. there. That's true. And that's why everyone on my team is also a dowser, because there can be things wrong in the grid, energy grid, underneath the property. There can be a break in the energy grid. Um, and when that happens, um, uh, you can have issues with spirits coming up through that grid. And, and, and if you're dowsing, you'll, you might, you'll probably find that. If you're paying attention, you have experience in that um, area, you'll probably find that. Um, and in that case, you're going to want to um, rebuild that, that power field underneath the house. And you do that with the help of elementals, um, with the help of all that is, um, with um, healing guides, um, shamanic um, guides. Um, and so when we go into a house, it could be any one of 10 or 12 different sort of things um, that could be causing the symptoms they're having in the house our um, goal is to find out what's causing it, rule this out, then rule that out, then rule out. And once we know what's going on, we can help the spirit, if it's a spirit problem, help the spirits cross over. If it's an open portal, we get all the spirits out then and we close the portal. <laughs> and um, otherwise, that you'll have a problem with more spirits coming back in again um, because the portal's still open. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, that so that needs work. I, I would imagine your work as a team. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is volunteer for some yes. places. Okay. Yeah. Uh, some, that some of that the, is some amazing. Of what we do Thank is volunteer you. Volunteer and some we get paid for. Um, we have a, we're working on a case right now in Lewiston, Maine, um, in a public housing um, area where uh, a family is has been with three little boys has been having issues in in their home. Uh, of course, the the Lewiston um, um, Housing Authority doesn't know we're doing this. So if if anybody knows any of those folks, don't please don't say anything. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. And the the issues are keeping the children from sleeping at night. Um, and so when we go in there, we took we took pictures of the outside. We always take pictures of the outside, and then we can go back and visit remotely afterwards. We often will do that. Um, we'll go through the entire inside. We stage mist. Um, I don't use um, um, uh, stage except outside. I use a smokeless stage mist inside because so many people are sensitive to um, uh, uh, different kinds of, of 
um, incense that you would use for um, clearing. So we, we try to use a sage mist inside. But we go in and we clean the whole place um, with the sage mist. And what that does is it makes the little remnants of, of feelings that are stuck in there and that are a problem, it gets rid of those things, it clears it out, and the and it's sort of the big problems then uh, are sticking out way more, like uh, like a, a, a vast relief, you know. And, and then you've got a really good um, uh, look at what, what exactly is going on here, um, and then you can start to uh, act on the different um, issues that need to be dealt with. Usually when people, by the time people come to us, they, it's usually not just one thing or two things that are going on. Uh, it's usually more than that. And we believe that education is an important part of this process. Um, I've been working with a family in Scarborough, Maine, for uh, about two and a half, three years now. Um, they had a problem in their house where um, in the little girl's room, and she was two and a half when this started, she was seeing spirits at night. She was afraid to be in that room by herself. There were spirits in the entire house. She couldn't, the little girl couldn't sleep unless she was holding her father's hand in her father and mother's bedroom because she was so afraid of what was happening. So we've been working with this mom and this little girl um, since then to um, teach the little girl um, to accept the fact that she can see spirits and that it's a superpower um, and um, it can be used for good and, um, and, and help her feel more comfortable with that and help the mom to feel more comfortable with um, being supportive of her daughter because who knows what to say when your child tells you I can't sleep because people are looking at me all the time in my room. If you're a parent, you know, you may not know what to say in that kind of a situation. And so uh, we coach the parents um, and we uh, and help them to coach the children so that they can feel more comfortable um, with their um, skills uh, and, and with, their, with what's going on around them, really. That's really a great um, – that is also very rare. I don't usually see – uh, psychics or mediums offering that service. Um, Adita is a psychic medium clairvoyant. She is uh, with Down East Psychics and Mediums, her Frontiers uh, of the Mind. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, Down East Psychics and Mediums is no more, alas. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it is uh, Frontiers of the Mind. Yeah. Uh, she gives assistance for psychic children and their families private personal mentoring for adults, Reiki and spiritual healing, psychic home inspection, shamanic healing, and ceremony. And also, if you wanted to speak to, you just want to speak to your departed loved ones, you are certainly welcome to contact Adita for that as well. She has a wonderful yeah. website and a lot of information about her, in, her investigations, her classes, meditations. Uh, she has a Facebook presence, so please look her up. She does parties, uh, gallery and private readings, uh, haunted house and business investigations, and they have a whole paranormal page and some free YouTube to personal development videos. So please check it all out. Uh, yeah. That is fascinating, absolutely fascinating. You've had a, a, um, a long-standing career doing this, uh, Idina. Are you fun. going to – yeah, and you're going to keep doing it, I would imagine, right? I can't imagine retiring. I have so much fun that and people talk about retirement, and I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm having too much fun to retire. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it's not. I think it's more. Um, I, I would think that the work that you do. I know my my work is a calling, a vocation. It's not something. Uh, it yeah. took me a long time to get to it and to embrace it. So I'm not going to give it up too easily. But you don't give up a vocation or a passion, right? I mean, that's what keeps you no. alive, really. That's what keeps you going. So I think that you will probably be going at this um, if you have to use a walker. <laughs> you know, I think you'll still be yeah. going. I, I think we should have an old folks home for psychic media. We should all hang out together and do great stuff. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You can do a lot of remote work that way. Um, that's very interesting. Yes, I do. And let me ask you this. 
when people call, is more of your work, um, is it a combination of everything, paranormal, uh, mediumship readings, uh, classes, is it uh, writing, is it all across the board for you? Pretty much. Um, in a week, I like to do some of, their, of all of those things, but I, I really um, trust the universe to send the right interesting things for me to do at, at the right time, and so I, I might, like right now, I, I've got this place that's going on in um, uh, in Lewiston that uh, working on that house in Lewiston, and, and that's a that's a, a, a gift to the universe. That one is, and I and I another one that I just finished um, three days ago in South Freeport, um, which was a, a paid um, investigation. Um, and, and what was going on in South Freeport was totally, totally different from what was going on in Lewiston. Um, and then I spent the day with an elderly gentleman that was 93 today talking about him growing up in a haunted house and what that was like and um, uh, and the different things that he has had happen to him over um, the years. Um, and he is just um, excited to be finding that he, <laughs> that, that, he, that he's not crazy and that all these things that happened to him that he's been wondering about and some of the things he's been worrying about are okay, and I like to do all of those things in one week. It's, um, and I like to, I like to do, um, I like to record when I'm doing readings over Facebook Messenger or if I'm doing a reading over the phone. I like to video, and and I sometimes get these really cool with my phone, and I sometimes get um, really cool um, orbs. And, um, and when I'm looking at the person's face on Facebook Messenger and recording the, this person that I took three or four days ago, I did a reading for her her, um, her deceased boyfriend came through. And when the deceased boyfriend came through, um, this wonderful blue energy came all around the side here, and I caught that with my camera on my phone. I, got, I uh, recorded the entire thing. And it was just so cool because... Um, as she's thinking of him and thinking how much she misses him and how much she wants to be with him, he's right there, and you can see that energy shifting right next to her left ear and down her shoulder. And a minute later, there's this white light that comes in down by that the hand on that side, and there's no, and I'm asking her, um, is there what's over here? What's next to your hand? Is there anything white over here? Because I'm seeing white light down there. And I recorded all of it. And so that's a good week to me when I can do all sorts of different aspects of the of the paranormal and, and enjoy it all. You know? <laughs> oh, it's, it sounds fabulous. Uh, Adita, you are a fascinating individual, probably one of the most interesting people I've ever interviewed. You have such an extensive career. Uh, you also include on your website resources for the grieving soul, which is beautiful. There are resources on there for people to uh, use and utilize books and uh, recommendations from you to help them get th- around the process or find a way to deal with the grief process um, since it's such a constant thing. I really yeah. have enjoyed speaking with you so much, and I'm going to give your website one more time. Adida Felt, E D D I T A Felt, F E L T, and dot com. What are you doing next? I have like a, a minute left. What are you up to next, Adida? And when are these books going to get released? We're dying to know. <laughs> well, I'm working on both of them, um, and um, and I'm I'm just very excited. I've actually been having people um, come to me about. Um, Missing loved ones, um, people who have uh, have disappeared and um, they don't know where they are. But having people come to me um, for the last couple of years and asking me to help them uh, to find out where their loved ones went to, and that is really um, hard work to do um, mm-hmm. because there there's a lot of things that come into play when you're doing that. And I want to learn more about that. And uh, there's a woman who teaches um, that who um, she teaches it at Lilydale in the summertime, Lilydale in New York. 
Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And I want to take that course, and I want to do more work with that. I'm, I found out in the, in the process of doing this so far that if people contact me and they have their ideas in their head, about where this person went or what might have happened to them, I'm going to pick up those ideas. Um, they're going to, uh, it's telepathic that, that happens to me. So that's one thing I've learned about the process. The other thing I've learned about the process is so far, I can only feel them up until the time they leave the body. So emotionally, I'm connecting with these people um, usually um, it, up until the time they leave the body. Then it's a blank. And after that, I don't know where they, they went to. And these, like I said, these are missing person cases, um, and people are looking to find the bodies and, and what happened to them. And so I want to know more about that. Well, I wish you a lot of luck with that. You're going to uh, – I know you will enjoy Lilydale, and I thank you so much for enjoying uh, – we enjoyed very much interviewing and speaking with you. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in. This was Adita Felt. She is – uh, so wonderful, such an experienced individual. Please look up her website. Thank you, Adita, and your cat for joining us and this evening. And it was great talking with you, too. I'm kind of sorry we didn't have time for any questions, but... Uh, I know. Well, we were having... We had such a good... You direct your questions to Adita Phil, because she can help you. Thank you so That's much, right. Adita. <laughs> I, uh, welcome. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, listeners, for joining us this evening on In the Psychic Flow. Next week, Laura Romero. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show. 